Last night at around midnight, we were blessed with another chapter in this never-ending story of drama with Nintendo, Panda, and Smash World Tour. This is of course a scene I'm very passionate about since our esports organization literally started in Smash Brothers. Without Smash Brothers operating the way that it has been, there would be no moist esports, and without moist esports, the world is a worse place. So I've been following this story extremely closely, and last night we got a brand new development. Now, we had previously already had a statement from Nintendo. They dusted off their typewriter and sent in the carrier pigeons to deliver their letter, stating that the cancellation of the Smash World Tour was, I guess, a bit of a misunderstanding. They didn't give them an official license for the Smash World Tour, but apparently verbally said they're okay to continue it, even though Smash World Tour says that verbally they said the opposite, that grassroots unlicensed events aren't welcomed anymore. So very conflicting reports there. I tend to lean on the side of Smash World Tour organizers being more truthful in this situation since it seemed Nintendo was kind of in panic mode and delivered that statement. And then we also got a statement from Panda saying the same thing as Nintendo, but then also dismissing Alan's behavior as not that big of a deal. Alan was the CEO of Panda who went around and would threaten events if they didn't join his circuit instead of the Smash World Tour. He would say like, it'd be a shame if this got shut down. It'd be a real shame to get Nintendo involved here. So he acted like the Smash Brothers Mafia running a protection racket. And when Panda released their initial statement, they kind of dismissed it as not a huge issue. They acknowledged it briefly saying like, yeah, Alan, Alan went rogue. He started breaking kneecaps of people that didn't want to join the Panda Cup and threatened to maybe get Nintendo involved in their unlicensed event and maybe intervene. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. That wasn't great, but that's okay. Alan cares. We all care. At Panda, it's community first. We're here to fuck some ass and have some fun. But that wasn't received positively since they didn't really address anything. It was very much a nothing sandwich. And then last night at midnight... Panda released another statement, and Alan did as well. Alan finally came out of the shadows, putting on his superhero cape in order to save the day by releasing his side of the situation, and instead of actually making a real statement, he dropped a teaser trailer for an upcoming statement. So he said that he has evidence to prove two things, and then dropped a picture of bullet points, two bullet points. The first one, Smash World Tour lied, and the second one, Beyond the Summit, which was the organization that he had threatened, was actually jeopardizing the community. That's all he said, but he said he has evidence to prove these claims, but he didn't provide it yet. So, if he does have evidence to back these up, that would be a huge Uno reverse moment, but I don't really know what that evidence could look like there, unless he's coming out with the wildest receipts the internet's ever seen, and he drops like a 14,000 word Mick Gordon response. But again, I don't know what his proof could even look like, unless he has fairy, fairy godparents that could just poof some magic shit into existence, because a lot of the claims have been confirmed by multiple sources. I think the only thing Alan could have is emails between him and Nintendo, where Alan maybe fought for Smash World Tour to not be cancelled, like maybe he was trying to, uh, like dissuade Nintendo from taking action against them. He's trying to like push them the other direction. Of course, I'm just spitballing here, but I do think it's important to mention that Smash World Tour in their initial statement never explicitly said that Panda was responsible for the shutdown of their world tour. They just pointed out the bad behavior from Alan that messied the water and made it extremely difficult for the Smash World Tour to actually function properly with their communications with Nintendo and made it a less than optimal environment for this circuit to exist in with how everything was being handled by Alan and Panda. So overall, that section in the Smash World tour statement that focused on Panda was mainly just shining a light on a history of bad behavior from Alan and how he would leverage that relationship he had with Nintendo against other organizers like with the threats he had made. So it was just talking about the negative implications from his behavior and how it affected that whole community of tournament organizers and made that whole scene worse behind the scenes. So it was never directly accusing Alan of being the one, like the mastermind behind their shutdown. It was more so just accusing him of being a bad actor that was really acting in their own selfish interests. Not so much being the one that forced Nintendo's hand to shut everyone else down or anything like that. Though of course there are plenty of ways of reading between the lines with Alan's history of using that Nintendo relationship to scare other organizers, like where he basically went to Beyond the Summit and said, might need to get Nintendo involved in this unlicensed event unless you, you know, give me broadcasting rights or join the Panda Cup or whatever. 
Like, you could then say that there was a very real chance that Alan did that again to the Smash World Tour, which eventually led to its shutdown. But that was never a claim Smash World Tour themselves were making. They were never saying Alan was the one that made Nintendo do that. They were just showcasing his bad behavior throughout the months and how it negatively affected the relationship for everyone. So I guess, and this is again just speculating, Alan could come forward with that evidence saying like, no, I never made Nintendo shut Smash World Tour down. I never shut Smash World Tour down. That wasn't me. That's a lie. But again, that was not the claim Smash World Tour themselves were making against Alan. Of course, once again, I'm just throwing darts at a dartboard on what his evidence could look like, but I am extremely excited to see it when he chooses to provide it. I think it's extremely important that we all have a full look at the entire situation from all sides, so that evidence, I think, is extremely important for everyone to see. Hold on, we got some breaking news from the front lines here. Perfect timing. They tweeted this right at the end of that set. Panda's heard the concerns of the Smash community and is taking immediate action. Well, you're wrong. This is not immediate. This is now like four or five days later. Alan is no longer CEO effective immediately. In the interim, Panda employees are working with outside advisors to form a temporary interim man management committee to act as CEO to navigate this critical time. It is a critical time. Their company is burning. They've lost 80% of their talent. Literally 80% of their salaried players have left or expressed intentions to leave now. So the company would die should that happen. The identities of those in the IMC will not be made public at this time due to concerns over harassment and safety. Fair. The IMC's immediate priorities are work with any team member that desires to resign, including release from any contractual obligations. Good. Support those who feel displaced through these events to find a home, either with Panda or another org. Solid. We call on the community to treat those affected by these events with grace, understanding, and call out and report any attempts of doxing harassment. Additionally, due to security concerns for our staff and contractors, the P Panda Cup finale is postponed. Yeah, everyone that was going left. They they all went to main stage instead or just outright canceled. So that's probably a good call because it would have been so fucking pathetic to actually watch that broadcast with empty seats and no players. Would have been going to like my 16th birthday party. The IMC will work to ensure or issue refunds to all those who registered. And Panda is committed to demonstrating our dedication to the community and everyone who shares our passion. Panda is committed to doing our part to move the competitive Smash community above and beyond the current situation, starting with an eternal restructure and re-education. That word is always so dystopian. A re-education. It makes it sound like they're going to lobotomize all the employees to our values as members of this community. Had this been their initial statement, I would have believed them more. If they did this first, I don't think they would have lost 80% of their players. Their first statement was like, Hey, yeah, Alan went rogue, and man, that was silly, wasn't it? But that's okay. Hey, Panda Cup's gonna fucking eat ass. It's gonna go great. You're gonna get out there and really steam ham. Like, just downplaying the severity of everything and just being really dismissive. That was a terrible response. This should have been their first one. This one's better. Action. Alan's no longer CEO. Okay? Makes sense. He literally did his best to bury this company. Oh, a rededication. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I thought that said re-education. A rededication. That's a seldomly used word. I thought it was going to be about employee training or something. Like, re remind them why we're in here and, like, why we're in the community. I haven't seen rededication since, fuck, probably ever. Yeah, ceremony in which a building or other structures is formally declared for the second, third, etc. time to have a particular purpose to honor a person or group. Alan's still working at Panda, though. Yeah, but even still, this shows action. Forcing him to step down takes away his power to intimidate other orgs, so he can no longer make those threats about shutting down. This just feels like a, a big panic response. And it's still not, like, the best action... Whoops. It's still not, like, the best action they're taking... Like, it is a step in the right direction, but I don't know how they could ever prove they care about the community going forward after what happened. Like, I don't know how they could ever earn that trust back. So I still don't really see a future for Panda events. Now, maybe they'll be able to earn enough trust back to prevent the other 20% of their players from leaving. That I can't really say. That's a personal decision, and I wouldn't hold it against them if they choose to stay with Panda. Because again, in the fighting game community, money is hard to come by. Prize pools for fighting games are actual nothing burgers. You get, like, cigarettes. You get, like, a pack of cigarettes, like chat said. So you're not making money in the fighting game community unless you're sponsored. You're just losing money. So anyone that chooses to stay with them, I totally understand. 
I think the damage has already been done. I don't really think there's a way of healing it. You can't really... You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, right? You know, as they say. The genie's not going back in the bottle. Had that just been their first response, I think they probably could have saved their company. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe they still can. Don't think there's a way to save it after the double down. That's what I said. Their first response, I think, was what actually buried them. Had they come out with this more hard-lined approach, I do think they would have had a much better chance. I, I, Like I said, I still think it's probably too little too late. I don't know how you really earn back the community's trust after this shit. I really don't know how. I haven't read this yet, so this is going to be breaking for all of us. What is missing from the statement is any mention of Alan divesting his... In divesting his interest in the company. My understanding is Alan owns Panda and basically controls the company. At first blush, this just sounds like damage control and a desperate attempt at grabbing a life draft. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I still think by not being the CEO, he loses most of his power with those like threats he was making, but he, I mean, LD knows far more than I do about this. Now, for those that don't know, LD is with Beyond the Summit. He was one of the people that was directly threatened by Alan. Alan, you know, threatened after not receiving broadcasting rights or BTS joining the Panda Cup. Threatened to, like, he slyly said, Nintendo might have to shut this unlicensed event down. Be a real shame if this just came collapsing down. Like the, you know, really getting super villainy with it. So, LD would know far more than I would here. Smash World Tour lied. And beyond the summit, leadership put the community in jeopardy. That is perhaps one of the douchiest things I have seen. My statement with evidence is coming. Why wouldn't you wait till you had evidence instead of this, this Twitter, uh, sorry, this like Tumblr attitude post. So he doesn't even deny threatening them, by the way. He's going to try and justify why he threatened them, saying that their leadership would have jeopardized the community. So I tried to be this, this saint to extend my bosom for them to suckle in safety. I was doing this for the community. If we let BTS leadership run rampant, the community would have died. At least that's the impression I get. Watch where you're scrolling. Mario is showing his ass in the reply section. Oh, is it Mario Goatsy? Hmm. I am very excited to see what evidence he has for Smash World Tour lying. W considering they have the statements in writing from Nintendo, and multiple orgs have confirmed Alan having repeated behavior about making those threats. I'm very curious to see. Maybe he has some wild receipts. Maybe. But he should have waited to post those instead of this. Anything but this. Who had a worse response to Backlash, Alan or Helena Taylor? I, I just can't really consider this Alan's response. Helena Taylor tried to, like, weasel her way out of that situation. Alan's just, he did two bullet points saying, it's a lie, and the other people are bad leaders. 